China attacks Australia and joins the UN Human Rights Council, while Apple uses ethnic slave labor. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell, and I need your help. YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people, demonetizing us, and not recommending our videos. So please, hit that like button, share this episode, and support us on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Revenge! That's how Chinese state-run China Daily is framing the relationship between China and Australia. This editorial accuses the Australian government of stigmatizing and demonizing the relationship with China. Keep in mind, this is coming from the same regime that called Australia the poor white trash of Asia, and has launched a trade war against Australia for political grievances. That's because Australia has started to wise up to the Chinese Communist Party's campaign of unrestricted warfare and push back. Part of that was related to a 2018 Belt and Road Agreement with the Australian state of Victoria. The Australian federal government is now considering cancelling that agreement. Why? Because it could put the work of Australian scientists into the hands of the Chinese communist dictatorship. The China Daily editorial says this is obviously intended as an act of revenge by Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. You know. I'm not sure China Daily understands what it wrote. Revenge implies someone wronged you. Surely China Daily isn't saying the Chinese regime wronged Australia, are they? Anyways, 2020 is finally over. And to kick off 2021, China will be starting a three-year term on the United Nations Human Rights Council. What, you thought this year would be better? <laughs> Enjoy your indefinite lockdown, you schlebs. But from a certain point of view, China joining the Human Rights Council actually makes sense. You see, the Chinese Communist Party has first-hand experience with how to violate human rights. A new report from BuzzFeed News has identified hundreds of detention centers for Uyghur Muslims in China's Xinjiang region, and at least 135 of these compounds also hold factory buildings. They identified these factories from satellite photos from Planet Labs. Here you can see six factories highlighted in blue. They tend to be long rectangular buildings. This is the 21st century. Who would be using ethnic slave labor? Well, for one, Apple's longtime supplier. Lens Technology, which makes iPhone glass and is owned by China's richest woman, received Uyghur Muslim laborers transferred from Xinjiang. That's on top of several other Apple suppliers that have also been accused of using Uyghur forced labor. Apple is taking these accusations very seriously. So seriously, in fact, that they're lobbying against a bill that would stop Uyghur forced labor. But that's not enough for Apple. No, they are dedicated. According to a new lawsuit, Apple also punished an American employee for approving an app critical of Beijing. But I don't want to sound like I'm being too hard on Apple, because there's plenty of criticism to go around. The EU has struck a major investment deal with China. Great! Now the EU can make lots of money off an authoritarian regime that uses concentration camps in slave labor. Don't worry, because as part of the deal, China has agreed to make continued and sustained efforts to ratify international conventions on banning forced labor. Good. Continued and sustained efforts. Not a promise to end Uyghur forced labor. No penalties if they don't. And certainly no inspections to see if they are. This is about trust. And considering how well China honors its international commitments, like the one country, two systems model in Hong Kong, I'm sure the Uyghurs will be fine. But more importantly, Europe's corporate elite will get richer. 
But it's not just European elite that benefit from this investment deal. It's the whole world. That's why this deal is just like China and the EU jointly presenting a New Year gift to the world. According to my favorite state-run media, The Global Times, this is about win-win cooperation and peaceful development. Welcome to 2021. But there is some good news. On December 21st, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced new visa restrictions on Chinese Communist Party, CCP, officials believed to have engaged in human rights abuses and their immediate family members. U.S. Department of Homeland Security Acting Secretary Chad Wolf also said his department was looking at further restrictions on China. Hold on. Chad Wolf? That's the chattest name I've ever heard. I'm sure Xi Jinping isn't too fond of him. The Trump administration is also bolstering an order barring U.S. investment in Chinese firms with ties to the communist military. In a statement, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said, the executive order applies to all transactions by U.S. persons, including individuals, institutional investors, pension funds, university endowments, banks, bond issuers, venture capital firms, private equity firms, index firms, and other U.S. entities, including those operating overseas. The Trump administration is pathetic. They really should take a cue from the EU about how much money can be made in China. At least American media is warning American investors about missing out. And coming up after the break, is the coronavirus getting worse inside mainland China? Welcome back. Remember how China beat the coronavirus in 2020? Well, it's 2021, and the coronavirus is getting worse inside mainland China. Footage emerged of authorities putting paper seals on residents' homes. If authorities find the seal is broken, they assume the family violated restrictions and will be sent to a quarantine center. I mean, that's slightly better than Chinese police just beating people up for violating restrictions. It's hard to know how bad the CCP virus is inside China right now. Of course, it's hard to know how bad it's ever been. But according to a new study, half a million people may have had the CCP virus in Wuhan. That's almost 10 times the official figure. Now, what's really scary about this study is that it was done by the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention. That's run by the state. And so if China's CDC is saying the outbreak was 10 times worse than official figures, that suggests to me that the numbers are actually even higher than that. So high that they had to increase the official figures because they couldn't cover it up. But at least from a certain point of view, China did beat the coronavirus. Speaking of the coronavirus, it turns out that the Chinese Communist Party has been suppressing coronavirus research. This is my shocked face. The party is giving money to military scientists researching the coronavirus, but it is also monitoring their findings and mandating that the publication of any data or research must be approved by a new task force controlled by Xi Jinping. Basically, the documents show the coronavirus cover-up goes right to the top. And meanwhile, the Chinese Communist Party is still trying to control the narrative by claiming that the virus didn't come from China, including from imported frozen foods. Like I said, it was pizza rolls all along. The 10 Hong Kong activists who were arrested after attempting to flee the city on a speedboat have been sentenced. Keep in mind, these Hong Kong citizens were held and tried in mainland China, which is exactly what last year's protests were originally trying to prevent. The activists were sentenced to up to three years in prison. Maybe the UN Human Rights Council should look into this, and their newest member can help. The sentencing of the 10 Hong Kongers follows this. A Chinese citizen journalist has been sentenced to four years for reporting on the CCP virus. Zhang Zhan is a former lawyer. For several months, 
She shared videos that showed crowded hospitals and residents worrying about their incomes. But for challenging the state's official narrative, she got four years in prison. She really should have just waited until the CCP realizes it can't keep covering things up and changes its official narrative. One of Zhang's lawyers said she's been on a hunger strike since June to protest her arrest because she was punished for exercising her freedom of speech. When told that she could be imprisoned, Zhang quoted a passage from the Bible and said she would expect herself to die in prison. You can't help but admire that courage, while also being horribly sad. But coming up after the break, there's actually some good China news this week, coming from America. Welcome back. To end the week on a positive note, there's some good news related to China. It comes as President Trump signed a massive omnibus spending bill on Sunday, which we talked about on our other show, America Uncovered. One of the dozens of random bills crammed into it was this. Starting on page 5037, the Taiwan Assurance Act of 2020. It says the U.S. should conduct regular sales and transfers of weapons to Taiwan in order to enhance its self-defense capabilities, including undersea warfare and air defense capabilities. This bill represents a renewed U.S. commitment to lend military support. That's important because Taiwan is facing more and more threats from the Chinese military, which I'll talk about in a special episode tomorrow. The bill also says the U.S. should advocate for Taiwan's participation in international organizations, where statehood is not a requirement. That includes the United Nations and the World Health Organization. I just hope the U.S. can get Taiwan back into Bird Life International, the bird-watching group that kicked Taiwan out back in September after facing pressure from Beijing. I really don't think Bird Life should require statehood for members. I mean, they don't require it for the birds. And speaking of things crammed into that omnibus bill, let's flip to page 5090 the Tibetan Policy and Support Act of 2020. One of the cheeky things it does is seek to establish a U.S. consulate in Tibet. And if the CCP won't allow that, which of course it won't, then the U.S. won't authorize any new Chinese consulates in the U.S. So there. The bill also allows the U.S. government to sanction individual Chinese officials who violate human rights in Tibet. That includes officials who interfere with the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama. Not kidding. For more than a decade, the atheist Chinese Communist Party has sought to regulate Buddhist reincarnation. Their long game is to eventually pick a future Dalai Lama who they can make into a CCP stooge. After the Tibetan Policy and Support Act passed on Sunday, China's foreign ministry wasted no time insisting that reincarnation of living Buddhas, including the Dalai Lama, must comply with Chinese laws, and that the U.S. is interfering in China's internal affairs. But really, when it comes to reincarnation, isn't China interfering in the universe's internal affairs? And now, it's time for me to answer a question from you, a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Jose Vega asks, Chris, every conservative is now on Parler. You should be there too, so we can follow you. Well, Jose, I'm not a conservative, or a liberal for that matter. No, I think the whole left-right political spectrum is completely wrong. It's more like a political horseshoe. Because when you go to the extreme on either side, it loops back in on itself. And I am at the top of the horseshoe. I call it being politically regressive. I'm a regressivist. I believe in things like mandatory abortions for all women and men, universal basic gun, starting at age three, and making schools unsafe spaces, mainly by releasing large apex predators. Can't argue about politics if you're running for your life, unless you have really good cardio. Anyway, I am on Parlor. You can follow me at Lord of the Uncensoring. Thanks for your question, and thanks for your support, Jose. And if you want to ask me a question and help me fight YouTube censorship, 
Join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Choose the amount you want to contribute per episode. You can also set a monthly limit. Once again, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.